Hi, my name is Matthew Perry with the Lincoln Park Church of Christ. I hope you're having a good week. I hope this week hasn't been too tough for you. I know this world is difficult. There's so many things for us to think about right now. We've got gas four to six dollars a gallon. Home prices are astronomical. Inflation seems to be at an uncontrollable rate. Wages are low. And if you're like me, you might be thinking, how am I going to make it? How am I going to afford to live? Prices are going way up and there's fear inside of me that because I can't do anything about it. There's a country that's being invaded by another country and people are dying. There's fear when I ponder these things because I don't know what to make of it. It's scary. There's this pandemic where I don't know if I'll get sick or not get sick or whether I should wear a mask or not wear a mask or social distance or whether these vaccines will protect me or turn me into a mutant or if I do something, somebody else is going to be bothered by it. With all these things, there's a certain amount of fear. I live in this culture, just like you, where it's not about forgiveness, where it's not about love. And if I make one mistake, it seems like it's going to be the end of the road, that it's game over. You might be just like me and struggle with these thoughts, with this fear. But let me tell you something that I really fear and struggle with right now. Today, I struggle with letting people in because I fear that when I do, they will just go away. I know I've said this before and you may have heard it. I've had a lot of people die. I've had a lot of people come and go. I've had a lot of people choose to leave when I wanted them to stay. And you know what? That hurts. I've struggled with these abandonment issues for so long, and I've dealt with them for so long, but to be honest with you, it can generate an uncontrollable amount of fear in my life. But you know what the Bible says about fear? The Bible says that perfect love drives out fear. And this is what I mean by that. Turn with me to 1 John 4. And if you don't have a Bible in front of you, just listen along. In verse 16, this is what it says about fear. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. You see, with God, there is no fear because there is no punishment. Folks, there is no fear in love. And if you fear like I fear, then we both probably have a problem with love. So what does that mean? How do we love and stop fear? If God is love, the challenge is, how do I become that? Well, to me, I started to think about this. Uh, Love is the act of doing something. Love isn't sitting on the couch uh, thinking about something. Love is action. If you're married, at some point, you probably had to choose to love your spouse. You probably had to be intentional about it. You probably had to choose to do things to show her that you love and care for it. The love that we talk about in 1 John is no different. For me, when I fear the best thing that I can do is go out and show somebody that I love them. In Genesis 2.15, it says that God put us in the garden with a purpose to work it to take care of it. God gave us a purpose. We are created to be active. We're created not to be passive. Doing nothing isn't going to drive out fear. So we need to show this love that is in us because God is love. So here's what I mean and here's what we can do. Maybe we can go out and uh, mow our neighbor's lawn or Maybe you can try baking cookies for someone down the street or stopping over your grandmother's house to play pinochle with with her. You could write a, a handwritten note telling someone how much, how awesome they are. Buy gas for a complete stranger. Give a random high five to people at the grocery store. Maybe even hold the door open for somebody and say hi and look them straight in the eyes. 
When was the last time you did any of that stuff? Think about it. Whatever you do, be intentional about it. Make a plan. Wake up with the idea that you need to show love to at least one person and then every week build on that. And then before you know it, you'll be a walking bundle of joy who forgot what fear was. That's the only way you're going to cast out fear in your lives. It's in the Bible. That's what it says. It's a simple idea when you break it down, but it takes work. It takes action. And I know you can do it. In Colossians 3 verse 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, clothe yourself with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. All these things are difficult. All these things can generate fear. It says in verse 13, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance with someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. There's so much fear in forgiveness, isn't there? But then Paul writes, right at the very end, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Love is a powerful thing. Love will change you. Not only will it drive out fear, but love will make life better for you. I'm not saying that love is easy, because I know it's not. Trust me. Love is difficult, but it will make your life easier if that's what you choose. Love will drive out fear and make the rest of the hard stuff in life just fall right into place. Remember this, folks. There is no fear in love. Please take that with you this week. Thank you.